Yankee and the Brits, the place to be. Radio living is the life for me. Airwaves spreading out so far and wide. Keep your FM, just give me that internet side. Online is where I'd rather stay. I've got a lot of music to play. I just adore a Yankee view. Darling, I love you, but give me a show to do. The chap. The brats. On air. That's fair. You are my wife. Goodbye, British life. The Yankee and the Brit on air. The Yankee and the Brit Sunday night. Jess McNair is here. Hello. Good evening. Hey. Hey, everybody. How are you? Doing all right. How y'all doing? We are doing great. I hope you're not going to be sniffling all over the telephone tonight. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to try my best. I got my honey and my tea ready. so. <laughs> oh, good girl. Loving honey. That's my favorite. What did you say? You've got a cup of tea? Yes. Oh, my kind of girl. <laughs> yes. Tea drinker, of course. Nothing like oh. a spot of tea. What do you have? Just a cold? <laughs> uh, allergies. It's crazy here in Nashville. Like, every single year around this time, it's just like... It sounds like I have the flu, but I really don't. <laughs> how, how are you supposed to sing with a throat like that? Yeah, well, it's everybody here, too. Everybody that hear that sings is going through the same thing, so. <laughs> we all sound like dudes. <laughs> That's terrible. But. What a way to go. So what's the story? How's things in Nashville? Everything working out? Everything's going well. Uh, got got some new music in the works this year. Uh, come out with a new uh, five-song EP, and I'm doing a lot of songwriting right now. So hopefully we'll get that out in early fall is my goal. We were just yeah, playing yeah. some of your tunes, and my God, you got a voice on you, girl. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, it sounds lots great. Lots of years of practice. <laughs> I would so. so how long have you been doing it? Or I should say, how long? when did you start singing? Let's start at the beginning. Um, I started singing really since I was really little. But, I mean, in front of people, probably around 10 or 11. And... Um, the first song I, I mean, the first time I ever sang in front of everybody was at a friend's wedding. It was my mom's best friend's wedding. And I just, I just went up to the DJ and I said, hey, I want to sing this. And it was like on like Donkey Kong after that. <laughs> so um, I didn't start professionally though until I was about 16. Uh, I started taking vocal lessons and, you play? Um, and then, oh, sorry. No, that's all right. I, th- I thought you were done. Go ahead. Um. And then I, I kind of wasn't sure what I really wanted to do. I just knew that I could sing. And so um, about 19, 20 years old, I decided, you know what, I really want to go for it. And I moved to Nashville when I was 20. Um, and it was kind of an eye-opener, but it was really good for me. And that's pretty much the story in a nutshell. <laughs> you play any instruments? I play a little bit of piano, and I'm learning guitar. Ooh, piano. That always adds a nice little flavor yeah. to everything. Yeah, I love piano, so... When did you start playing the piano? Uh, about around the time I started taking vocal lessons, because um, I wanted to be able to practice on my own at home. So, in between lessons and stuff like that. And it was it was very basic. It was very beginner then. And then when I moved to Nashville, um, realized that if I wanted to uh, be in competition with everybody else, I needed to, you know, learn a little bit more. So, um, it, it's been really great for songwriting purposes, for sure. Are you from Tennessee? No, I am originally from Pennsylvania, little town north of Pittsburgh. Oh no, where at? What town is that? It's called Freedom. It's um, it's it's like forty five minutes north of Pittsburgh, near Ohio. I know right where it really is. Down. I know exactly yeah. where it is. I'm from Ohio. Really? Yeah, and Texas. Like Texas is where I belong. Yeah. <laughs> I lived in Nashville too, outside of Nashville, out in Kingston Springs, if you know where that is. Yeah, I've heard of that. What, is that making that much noise? Yeah. Oh, sorry. It's all right. He's just been sat here wiping his hands and his hands microphone's sweaty. picking it up. <laughs> like saying, will you shut up? Just, you know, he comes on here when we have an interview and he clips his fingernails <laughs> and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> and he's lights oh his cigarettes God. and picks his nose and scratches his arse. <laughs> I'm, just, oh I'm just your ordinary average guy, that's all. <laughs> we do sounds, best stuff. Sounds pretty accurate there. <laughs> well, well, how long ago did you leave Pennsylvania? 
Uh, I moved here in 2010, so I've been in Nashville about eight years. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. So you like it there? Yes, love it. Um, I miss home sometimes, of course, but um, I feel like I found my place, the place I need to be. Of course, everyone else is moving here now, so it's kind of getting crowded. I but, know. That, um, that's what it's like here in Texas. Everybody's coming down here, too. It's too many people. Yeah, it's kind of insane. Thinking about maybe moving a little bit outside of town because um, it's getting too populated, but uh, love Tennessee for sure. Tell me, tell me you don't miss the weather. I don't miss the weather. Oh, <laughs> I don't either, man. I have no use for that cold, nasty stuff. I'd rather be here in 100 degrees than live up there in that zero degrees. Absolutely. And the mud and the sure. slop. Oh, I hate the north. I've grown to hate that so bad. Yep. And I just remember, um, I was like four years old when we had that big blizzard up there. Oh, and geez, so yeah. we we had a blizzard, too, uh, the year before I moved to Nashville. Like, my car was covered. And I was like, I'm done with this. <laughs> See? Everything happens for a reason. Uh, yes, that's true. That's do, very true. Do you have your own band? I do, yes. Got a five piece band. I've got uh, drums. I've got bass. I've got electric guitar. I've got keys, and I've got fiddle. Is that, so, do they travel with you all the time, or are they just uh, when you're, you know, in a studio? Um, they travel, uh, and they kind of all have their own thing going on too. Um, the fiddle player, she's kind of her own artist as well. Her name, I don't know if you've heard of her before. Her name's Lacey Carpenter. Um, but she's pretty popular in Texas as well. And she lives here in Nashville. But everybody else travels. Um, some some travel with just me. Some travel with multiple artists. So Are they people you met down there or are some of them from up north? Nope. Uh, everybody met here in Nashville. And we're all from different places. So you got like a whole new set of friends and a whole new world. Yes, absolutely. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> and nobody's, nobody's ever from Nashville, so like everybody I meet is from somewhere else. <laughs> I know. We have a, we have a good friend, and, I, and, I have a, and he's a friend of mine that I worked with in Ohio when I lived up there, and he's in Nashville now. They do uh, um, kind of between heavy metal and rock kind of stuff, but uh, they're, okay. doing, they're doing real good around Nashville, I guess. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that kind of music. Thing. I didn't know that kind of music uh, survived around there, really. Honestly, lately, um, there's a whole lot of different genres that have been coming into Nashville. Um, a lot of people from LA and New York are moving in, and um, there's a lot of pop and rock and R and B uh, making their way to Nashville. But I mean, the staple is country. I mean, that's never going to go away. So, is it the music that's bringing them there, or is it just Tennessee and the the country and the weather and that kind of thing? I think it's a mixture of everything. I would say music. There's a lot of business here, a lot of opportunities as far as work, um, and it's just really great weather. It's a nice, you know, place to live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. I Are do have a question. Do you at all um, Nobody said you could speak. feel like you've had to sell your soul being in Nashville, doing what you do? Because of what the reason that I ask is that we've had a lot of artists on here that they've all mm -hmm. headed that way, but when they get there, they love them, mm -hmm. but they want them to change. They don't want them to be themselves and be the style that they've created. So mm -hmm. I guess what I'm asking is, you know, did you have to change who you are and what you do and your style to fit in there? I personally have not done that yet, and I personally don't wish to do that moving forward. Um, I believe that everybody kind of develops as they get further into the business. But I feel like, uh, you know, if you have made it per se and you, you're in front of a label and they want to change everything about you, I don't think it's worth signing. You know, I don't think it's worth working with somebody that is just wants to totally change you. Um, and so I've, I've heard both sides of the story. I have friends that have, have found deals that they never had to change a thing and it worked out for them. Um, but I've also heard the horror stories where, you know, they wanted to change every single thing about them and um, they felt like they had to to be able to make it. And I don't think that's true. I think if you find the right person to work with you, um, the right label to work with you, that they're going to accept you for you and they're just going to enhance you, 
you know. Yeah. So. I guess as long as that's all they're doing, that's fine. I don't see any problem yeah, with that because that's the next step forward, mm-hmm. I think. And if you are willing to right. change who and what you do, you've got to be comfortable with uh, you've got to be comfortable with that decision. You know, it's I don't know. Um, so anyway, what is your earliest musical memory? Sorry, we have a great big dog thundering around the place. You can hear him walking around. Hi, there's a go, Malfred. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> See, she said hello to you. He's a little radio nice, dog. She's a nice girl. How do you know? You never met her. Because she just sounds nice. Okay. This one's not a poodle. Okay. Yeah, she's not a poodle. She's a human. Is that all right? Oh, yeah. That's... This one's got two legs. Maybe not as hairy as you. What? <laughs> two legs? That's yeah. weird. Look out. He's got a big I'm nice, I promise. <laughs> go on. You go lay down for a little bit. When we're done, I'll let you out. Go on. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Okay. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right, go ahead. Say it again. Yes, sir. What's your earliest musical memory when you was young and good looking and had little tiny legs? <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of a crazy child. I was like very eccentric, but I was really shy up until like I started singing like late in my later years. So I would put on a show, like I would always dance on the coffee table for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> And my mom has proof of that, and I'm like, please hide that, because no one needs to see that. But I would always hop up on the, the dining, or the living room table, and just put on a show for everybody. <laughs> well, that's cool, though. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you, is that all you do now is music, or do you have another job? Um, well, everybody in Nashville has a day job, whether they want to admit it or not. <laughs> I'm an Uber driver. Oh, yeah? How's that working out? And uh, it's awesome. I I like it because I get to meet people that come to visit. And uh, if they're, you know, if I have a show or something, I can, hey, I, hey, I'm playing at 6 o'clock. Come see me. You know, I don't have to, like, go by anybody's rules. I make my own hours. I drive when I want. Um, and I just get to meet new people. And it's really it's kind of a really awesome opportunity for an artist. Have so. you met any weirdos or anything like that? But not, nobody that's ever really, like, really creeped me out, so that's probably a good thing. Well, that's but, a cool um, job. I've never heard, we haven't had anybody on the yeah. show that does that kind of thing, so that's that's different. Yeah, yeah, so. What did and you do before you did that, or before you, I, I don't know, what did you do before you got into uh, actually singing all the time? Um, I was a fair and bartender, and the funny part about that is I'm actually going to be going back to that, but um, John Rich is opening a new place in Nashville here on Broadway. And I auditioned for him two weeks ago, and he hired me as a singer, um, but he also hired me as a bartender for his new venue. I'm going to be transitioning back to that, but um, when I first moved to town, I was a server and bartender. Um, a lot of people do that, too, and it just it pays the bills, and it gives you that flexibility to still do music. So. And you still meet a lot of the, uh, if you're in the right kind of bar, you still meet a lot of the uh, high rollers, huh? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Wow, that's and it's pretty happening in Nashville, so. Have you had to do the waitress thing? I'm sorry? Have you had to do the waitress thing yet? Yeah, that's kind of where I started, and then I moved into bartending. Um, but actually, when I was in Pittsburgh, or up home, I went to, I took a bartending class, because I really, that's what I really wanted to do when I moved here, and I was beat by music. And um, it kind of helped me get in the door a little bit more, and so I, I waitressed for a little bit, and then I moved into the bar, like, maybe six months later, so... How do, you, a lot more fun. <laughs> how do you keep how do you keep up with the hours? I mean you have to you have to uh I mean obviously you practice singing, you go to the studio, you work. I mean that's yeah. must keep you on your yeah. toes. Yeah, it, it it's definitely tiring sometimes for sure. Uh especially when you're traveling in the summer too. I mean, you know, you go out for a weekend, you go for a couple of days and then you're right back to work on Monday. And then, you know, Thursday night or Friday morning, you're leaving again. So it's kind of crazy. Yeah, I guess. So I guess you have to provide earplugs for your Uber taxi customers. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, Is that from singing too much or talking too yeah, much? Yeah, I would. Did you uh, to my customers? <laughs> a little bit of both. And, you know, some most of the time when they find out I'm a singer, they'll make me sing in the car for them. <laughs> so, like, I want to make sure that you can actually sing. I'm like, okay. <laughs> So. Why? Would they think you were making that up? I mean, some people do. I guess they just, I don't know, I think people are intrigued when they come to Nashville, especially when it's their first time, and they're like, they, they get real excited when they know somebody can sing. Yeah, so. I suppose. They may not have heard of you, but it's like, wow, she's a singer yeah. from Nashville. How cool. Yeah, they must right. get in the taxi yeah. and think, oh, everybody sings around here. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm like, believe me, I'm not the only one. You're going to find that out in about five minutes. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I can imagine how many people are vying for everybody's attention all the time. Yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. You, uh, but it's fun. Have you had, do you do any Facebook uh, live, Facebook live shows? Yes. Yeah. yeah, so I do Facebook lives every single Monday. Really? Uh, we got to get around. the link. We yeah. gotta, I'm going to hear yeah. that. Um, so I'll either, you know, sing by myself or I'll have my guitar player come and um, play with me and we'll kind of go back and forth. But um, it's every Monday and I call it Music Monday. Where, um, where do we find you at? It's on my music page at, um, on Facebook at Jess Can Hear Music. And uh, I always go live on that page and then I share it on my personal page too. You might need to put a space in between the names. I might. I'm used <laughs> to typing web addresses. Um, MC. MC. It is MC. See? I told you. There you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Nothing like having the wife right there at your side. So do you have a musical family? A little bit, yes. Uh, my dad was always in bands. He's a lead guitar player. Uh, he doesn't sing, but my mom um, my, nev- my mom never pursued music, but she's a decent singer. Um, and my dad sings a little bit, but he's always been a guitar player. And then um, his, his grandfather was a guitar player as well. It skipped a generation and then went to him. And then came to me. So, ah. what type of music did you grow up listening to? You know, around your parents. Um, my dad was like heavy metal, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> he was in, he was like eighties rocker. Um, but my I was always around country, like old country music, because um, I spent a lot of time at my grandparents' house, and my mom and dad worked all most of the days um, during the week, and so they would help you know babysit, and I would always school country and um you know from the 40s on up so it's kind of a little bit of a mixture and then when i was young you know pop music was popular so i kind of got you know i got rock i got pop i got country um and i i really like everything i I don't you know discriminate against any genre really are your parents from pennsylvania born and raised there yes both of them were um my dad lived in arizona for a little bit and then came back to pennsylvania and then my mom uh lived in Florida before they met, and they had both ended up back in Pennsylvania. And then they actually moved uh, down here in Nashville two years ago, so um, we're close again, which is kind of nice. Yeah, my mom did the same thing when my brother... My brother moved to Texas before I did, then I moved down here, and uh, my mom one day, I went to Ohio to visit, and uh, we're moving to Texas, and if my sons are going to be in Texas, I'm moving to Texas. (laughs) She grabbed my dad by the nap of the neck and said, come on, we're going, and next thing you know, I'm going up there to move them and all their goodies down here. They sold everything and uh, left the whole life behind, and here they are. Exactly what they did. They're like, uh, I want to be near you. And my, there's only, there's, there's two, I have, I have two brothers and a sister. Um, two of them are still from Pennsylvania, and then my other brother lives here in Nashville, too. So there's two of us here, and then there's two of them back in Pennsylvania. Well, I guess you can't have a famous daughter and live far away, huh? <laughs> Mom wasn't going to have it. <laughs> If you don't mind my asking, because me being from the north, what did your parents do for jobs? Um, my mom is a nurse, and she works in uh, the cardiac center in Nashville. Um, and my dad is a welder. He's He's been a welder for a lot of years. Uh, he builds parts for airplanes and, like, restaurant um, utility stuff. Like, he makes all kinds of stuff. Is that what he did um, in Pennsylvania, too? Uh-huh, yeah. I just, I, I just uh, you know, being from northeast Ohio and... And uh, northwestern mm-hmm. Pennsylvania, you know that you know. I'm always uh, oh, they must have been a coal miner or something. <laughs> Pittsburgh's a steel town, so that's pretty much. That's know. what I was going to say next. You know, you either worked yeah. in Youngstown at the steel mill, or you worked in Pittsburgh at the steel mill. So yeah, mm-hmm. I know that's. Yeah. Uh, I just can't get that out of my head. I guess it's uh, <laughs> you know, born and raised with it stuck into your soul. I suppose everybody was blue collar oh, yeah. workers. Yep, that's true. What do you do? Are you in the studio now, or or is your EP? Do you said an EP you were working on? I don't want to do a full album. I just want to do like five or six songs because um, I haven't released anything in a couple of years and I'm really working on something new, uh, kind of a new sound maybe. Um, but I want it to be right. So I've, I've been really focusing on the songwriting right now. And then hopefully I'll be in the studio um, in the maybe like mid-summer and my hope is to have it released by early fall. Now, these songs we've been playing here now tonight, are mm-hmm. they uh, already on an album, or how are they out there? 
actually everything that uh, physical copies of uh, they're gone. I, I just didn't reorder them, but they're all available on iTunes and they're all available on uh, Reverb Nation and Spotify. Very cool. So how do you... How, oh, I'm not sure how to put it into words so it makes any sense. I don't know. <laughs> Speak it out, will you? I'll think about it a minute. Go ahead. You got something? Because I'll have to put that in some kind of order. <laughs> so what kind of things are you writing about for these new songs? Uh, you know, is it is it life experiences? Is it... Um, well, what is it? Especially up until this point, um, I've, most of my songs are personal life experiences or someone else's personal life experience. Um, and that, that will still be carried over into this, this new EP, but um, I'm really wanting to do something. I've never really had that like fun party song or club song, um, which I would really like to accomplish on this EP. And um, just like some just true country pop, I really have a rock influence because of my dad, um, and and kind of just revisiting a little bit of everything, a little bit of old school like '90s country mixed with some rock and pop. But um, I just never really had that fun party song, and that that's my number one goal, and it's probably going to be my single once I have it. Um, but I've been co-writing a lot too, and kind of working with some other writers, and it's it's been working out really well. And getting different perspectives from other people is really great, too. So did you figure out what you wanted to ask? No, I lo- totally <laughs> lost it now. So I just have to <laughs> wait till it comes back. Well, Randy always asks a particular question every single week. All right, I will. If, uh, and the other, are, are you married? No, I am not. But I am dating and been in love with my drummer for four years. <laughs> you almost sounded proud of the fact you weren't married. Everybody asks that because everybody's just waiting on him to ask me. And if he was on here listening right now, which he might be, he's probably going to kill me. But <laughs> Well, come on, um, mister. Get it together. She's waiting on you. Right. Live on the Yankee and the Brit show. Don't turn him down, will you? <laughs> now, where is he from? Is he from Pennsylvania or Tennessee? Or? No, he, he is from Houston, Texas. Look, mister, get over there and grab up that gal. <laughs> She's been educated in the north. She lives in Tennessee in the south. You can't go wrong with this woman. What is wrong with you, boy? <laughs> Come over there and put a can on, of Texas whoop ass on you. And she dances on tables. Uh, it's even better. Even better, yeah. At least you don't have to worry about the pole falling down in the bedroom. Exactly. No, no that's sweet. Stick a, coffee, right. stick a coffee table on the bed. Oh, you've probably seen them. you've probably seen the videos where the girls will pole dance in their house and a pole will fall down and they'll break their neck yeah. or something. See, you dance on the yeah. table. Hell, the worst they can do is flip you on the floor. She's got right. it made. She's got it all going on there, Mister. Get over there and get that taken care of today, right yep. now. I think he's. I think he's working on it. He, he's just. He's waiting on the right time, and I'm like, okay, uh, this year, please. Thank you. <laughs> you know what? The right time is when it runs through your mind. That's the right time. Don't okay. wait. Don't yeah, hesitate. That's right. I had I had three three practice runs before I met Donna. Oh, you, <laughs> you smooth operator. That's funny. Uh, yeah, we neither one of us have been married or have kids, so we're kind of enjoying that right now. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys got your whole cool life ahead of you. You could get famous, and he can live off yeah. your coattails. You can't beat that. Yeah, never know. So we'll see. All righty. Not bad for an old pencil tucky girl. <laughs> and he still forgot to ask you the question that he likes to Oh, ask yeah. On. What do you drive? I bet you drive a smart I, car. A smart car? So, I drive a Honda Accord, and it's a 2009, and it's the best car I've ever had. Nah, <laughs> that ain't a four-wheel drive truck. What kind of country girl is no, that? No, I know. Well, that's my next vehicle. As soon as I have money, I'm getting a truck. Whoop, whoop, whoop. There you go. Now we're cooking. See, things are getting better yeah. as we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's, she sounds like a sensible girl until she says, I do. Well, you know. <laughs> we all have that issue at one point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. You at least have to try it once just to see if you like it or not. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is your plans for the next few years? You know, do you have any advice to give to your future self just be yourself always because i feel like as an artist a lot of us uh, we, we tend to get down on ourselves too much we, we compare ourselves too much to everyone else and if you keep doing that you're not gonna you know branch out and create something different that's not out there yet so that would be my advice for myself and anyone else out there that's you know trying to make it or 
um, that have just entered their first couple years in the business. Um, you know, just be yourself. Stay true to yourself. Yeah. That's pretty much what a lot of people say. And most of the artists that come on with us are independent artists. Are, are you? Do you consider yourself independent or are you signed to a label? Yeah, I'm independent as of right now. Mm-hmm. It's almost all yeah. of them say that. Stay true to yourself and don't worry about what the others think and it'll all work out. Yep, that's true. Have you played or, I should say, sung, sang, done any rock music? I mean, maybe not recorded it, but I mean, have you attempted <clears throat> to try any of it? Yeah, um, I usually... Here in Nashville, you kind of have to do a little bit of everything because the crowd, you know, they don't necessarily all like country. So I usually mix in a little bit of rock and some blues, and I've I've been told that I should really, you know, try some blues out. Um, I haven't gone that route yet, but you never know; it may be a future thing. Blues rock is not really straight blues; it's got a it's got a rock influence, um, and I I really like. I don't know if you remember like. Kind of like the Alanis Morissette rock, um, which is a little bit more poppy. But, yes. um, oh, we love Alanis. A little, a little bit of that mixed with some, like, Tracy Chapman. That's kind of the vibe I'm going for. Oh, my. But, um, so somebody yeah. like somebody like uh, Joan Jett or uh, some of the old rock yeah. rockers, that's that's too rocky? or No, that's perfect. <laughs> Yeah, that's some, that was some kick-ass stuff back when I was young, you know, yeah. uh, late 70s, early 80s. That stuff really kicked. Yeah, yeah, that's, and that's the kind of stuff my dad played, so that, that's what the influence is there, for sure. Have you ever played with your dad? Yeah, so when we both lived at home, and I'm trying to get him to um, get off his butt and play with me again here in Nashville, I think he's scared, but I said, you're awesome, you need to play with me. <laughs> but we used to do shows together up home, um, he wasn't in his band anymore when I started singing, but uh, he would always do acoustic shows, and uh, we would do full band shows together in Pennsylvania. So now, what is I'm he... trying to get him to do that here. He plays guitar? Yes, he's the lead guitar player. Mm-hmm. You should get him to uh, bend some strings a little bit and crack the rust out of there and uh, stick him on Facebook Live a couple times. Let him kind of get uh, back in the swing so we can all uh, see how you guys do together. That would yeah. be awesome. That would be awesome. That would be a great, that's a great idea. Yeah, I'd love uh, to see you and your father singing. That's, I love that kind of stuff. It's slightly difficult, though, because of the delay, um, you know, if you're doing it via the internet. If you do it via the phone, well, I don't think mm-hmm. you can do it via the phone as well as via the internet. What is? The, what do you want, yeah. Alfred? The do you need to go outside that bed? Yes, I need to go out. All right, hang on. Do you mind if we interrupt this young lady? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hurry up, huh? <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> He is one big giant dog. He's a great Dane, and he um, he's a right demanding little I devil. I love animals. That's awesome. <laughs> so, uh, do you have plans to travel um, for music or just in general? Yeah, like tours. Um, yeah. So normally we do East Coast states, um, mostly Southern East Coast states, and I uh, would like to get into some different areas. Uh, I've never been, I've never toured out west, um, and I think it would be kind of different uh, feel for us, but um, also I've never been further north than Pennsylvania, so, um, you know, the really northern states, when it's not snowing, would be kind of cool. Well, of course, make sure you come to Texas. Yeah, we've actually played in Texas a few times. I remember two years ago we played in Houston, and it was about 110 degrees, and I about died. And we were playing outside. Isn't it beautiful? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was nice, but it was a little too hot for me. Hey, it's not six feet of snow. It's not coming off of Lake Erie, and it's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> I'll take it any that day. That is true. That is true. I will take okay. that any day over living up there. And Could you imagine doing a concert up there in December? January? Come on. Oh, heck no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe inside. Stay away from that. Do you play bars, though? Yeah, so normally we kind of got a mixture going on. We do we do bars and clubs, but we also do a lot of shows and festivals, too, especially in the summer, um, which is great because you get a little bit of everybody that comes to festivals. Normally in a bar, you know, you get 21 and older, but it's really great to get all genre um, and all ages sure. uh, when you go to a festival. So. Which which do you prefer as far as just playing to the crowd? Honestly, I like both, but if I had to choose, I would say festival because bar crowds can really be hit or miss. Um, they either really are engaged and really love it, or they don't care at all. <laughs> I suppose it depends um, on what time it is and what mood you catch them in. 
Yeah, that's very true. Um, but I just really, I do like festivals. They're usually outside. You get a really good crowd. Um, and again, it's all ages. It's not, you know, just a group of, you know, 20 to 40. It, it's everybody. So. Now, see, if you play jazz... Or, uh, you know, mm-hmm. you could uh, play in a piano bar somewhere once you learn how to play the piano properly. Mm-hmm. And then you could play to the yep. snobby crowd with the tuxedos and their, <laughs> their noses in the air. And you could sit there right. and just snob back at them and have a good time. <laughs> that would be interesting, yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't it, though? <laughs> uh-huh. All right. Hey, we've got a couple questions I'd like to ask you, I guess. Do you have anything else? Uh, where can we find your music? We've run her through the gauntlet, I think. So, um, obviously, the main spot would be iTunes under my full name, Jessica McNear. Or you can go on my website at jessmcnearmusic.com, and uh, you can download the music right directly from my website uh, from Reverb Nation, and it's the same place as iTunes. Um, But all of my music is there for you to listen to and download. And then, of course, you can always log on to Spotify and listen there. Jessmcnear.com. Altalier? Jessmcnear Music. Jess McNear music. Talk. No, that's not the that's not the one, Randy. No, that's fashion, isn't it? Look, that girl's got her boobs hanging out. What is that? <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> it's Are just, you sure? It's, it's JessMcNear.com. <laughs> Jess McNear music forward slash index forward slash. Jess McNear music Yeah, she's not the yes, one sir. with the titties at. <laughs> okay, well, you never know what she's done. You know, she doesn't have to tell all. All right, I'm just. Don't believe me, that's dummy. <laughs> Oh, I, it's a fashion page, and I clicked on there's all these women wearing these sheer tops and everything. Not, I'm not complaining, but oh, it's hey. just the idea. There you are. All right, nice. Good. Bam. Beautiful. Sticking your link in the uh, chat over here. There she is, guys. Go get it. All right, very <laughs> cool. And uh, your Facebook page, I found that. I guess I got the right one. It's uh, Jess McNear Music. Oh, wait, that's your web address. Uh, <laughs> Facebook at Jessica McNear Music. Okay. I and all those one. links, all the social links are on my website as well. So if you just go to the website, you can click on them from there. Awesome. Awesome. Is that you with the purple hair? I wish it was. I actually posted that because I was like, everybody, what would you do if I dyed my hair purple? It's my favorite color. And uh, I've actually been thinking about doing something different as far as my look goes to stand out from everybody else. So nobody on Broadway has purple hair, so. <laughs> well, let me let me tell you, I put some purple in my hair once, and I tell you what, it looked badass. There was nothing any more cooler than my hair when I had purple in it. And I washed it, and it all came out. And it wasn't permanent. Yeah. It, was, it was actually two lots of permanent that went in because my, cause it just didn't take the first time round. And I'm like, yeah. one wash, and my hair is like pink. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no. I, w- I was absolutely gutted. She likes purple. Look at that. Love the hat. That's gorgeous. Purple hat, the purple Thank sweater. Yeah. Oh, I tried to tell Donna I love a woman in a hat, you know, and she doesn't want to dress like the queen, so. <laughs> <laughs> he always tells me to wear, wear a hat, and, it, and I wear it for about two or three minutes, and I'm like, what is this thing? Get it off my head. And they always wonder how Americans walk around with baseball caps on their head. It's like you can't see anything above you. I mean, it's Kick like... the bird shit out of your eyes. What's wrong with <laughs> That's that? one good point. <laughs> <laughs> but us, us Brits, we don't wear baseball caps. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so anyways, are you done now? I'm done. Okay, i got ten <laughs> questions for you, then we'll let you go. Oh, the ten boring you will lose the world We're going to witness a divorce here in a few minutes. <laughs> What's your favorite word? Oh, goodness. I don't know. <laughs> Say, oh, goodness. What a boring question. <laughs> Just ignore her. Um, can we come back to that? Because I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. What's your least favorite word? Ooh. Um, honestly, the F-bomb. Because, like, I hear it all the time. And it's just, like, I don't know. I just can't. I don't say it. I mean, I know people, it, sometimes it's an expression. It's not really like them being rude. But, like, I hear it so much, it's just like I cringe. I'm just like, okay, can you, like, have a conversation without it? <laughs> I admit, I say it a but, lot. But there yeah. are, there's a time and a place for it, I think. When he hits that's himself different. with a hammer. Oh, yeah, like, when I hit myself with a hammer. <laughs> well, that's a little different. You can't control what comes out when you're hurting. <laughs> no, and boy, do yeah. I got some winners, too. So did you oh, figure yeah. out what your favorite word is? <laughs> Um, I usually say nice a lot, like, hey, nice, or, I don't know, just, I say nice a lot. 
I don't know why. That must be Not your favorite word. Nice. Uh, what turns you on? Um, good country music. <laughs> what turns no, you off? Like, um, uh, honestly, when I go to see live music and the singer can't sing. <laughs> There's a lot of that. Because I want to... Yeah, because I just want to hop up there and be like, okay, not not as an ego thing, but like sometimes it's just like nobody's responding to what's going on on stage, you know, so it kind of kills the crowd. Okay. Uh, what sound do you love? What song? Sound. Sound. Um, hmm. Uh, birds chirping. I like to hear, like, I like that. It's calming to me. I like to sit on the porch and just listen to the birds. Yeah, go kind out. Of sing their song. Go out in the woods. Yeah. What That's sound awesome. do you hate? Uh, car horns and alarms. <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite curse word? I can get our radio dog to help you out with this one. What's what's the what's her favorite curse word, Alfred? Wait, what do I? Uh, I usually it's shit. I say shit a lot. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Alfred, stay out of this. I can't help it. All right. Um, what's your? Let's see. What profession other than yours? And I guess you mm-hmm. could go with music here. What profession other than yours would you like to attempt? Uh, honestly, uh, I would like to open up at some point in my life. I always wanted to open up like a bed and breakfast or something that I could make my own. Like I was. I don't know. My family's always been kind of entrepreneurial, and, like, I just always really thought it would be really cool to have a bed and breakfast, like, right outside of Nashville. In the mountains? Yeah. Absolutely. Like, very very secluded. <laughs> what profession would you not like to do? Work at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas would be very upset. <laughs> Wouldn't it be boring if he was the Walmart greeter? Hello, have a nice day, have a nice day, have a fucking nice day. Oh, I just swore. <laughs> exactly. See, that, ever, there's oh, a time and place for it. <laughs> have you ever watched Jeff Dunham? I know you have. Yeah. Of course. Oh, gosh. He, uh, Walter, every time he does the skit with him as the Walmart greeter, I die. <laughs> you got to go watch it. <laughs> Walter is too cool. Yes, we love Walter. If heaven exists... What would you like to hear God say when you get to the pearly gates? Um, probably a job well done. That's a nice ending. Very good. I'm not going to ask her the other one. Well, She if may you... be a northern girl, but I'm not going to push it. If you could have a party in the sky with someone that's passed away, a musician that's passed away, who would it be? Mm-hmm. This could be a friend or a family if you know someone, or it could be someone famous. Um, that's a hard question. Hmm. Well, I, this may be sound kind of random, but um, as far as musicians, uh, my parents were hippies, especially my mom. And I used to listen to Janis Joplin a lot, and yeah. I always thought it would be really cool, cool to meet her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that would be too. a jam session. You know it. That would be cool. All right. I know you're a Yankee girl, so I'm going to ask you this anyways. Because we've, right. we've never asked a woman on the show this, so I think we're going to try it out and see what kind of response we get. Uh-oh. Ooh, okay. If if you had a penis for twenty four hours, what would you do? Um, I would probably just stare at it a lot. Like, what the hell is this thing? <laughs> I'd be like going up to people in cars and wiggling it in the faces, in the windows, <laughs> old people's homes, and all sorts of places. We usually ask yeah. the, we usually ask the guys if they had a vagina for twenty four hours. What would they do? You wouldn't believe some of the answers we get. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, what one guy said he'd go for a bikini wax. And I'm like, you want to oh, suffer? Wow. You want to suffer? You've got this thing for twenty four hours, and you want to suffer with it? <laughs> oh my god! My idea was just go out and make all the money I can before my twenty four hours is up. Oh heck yeah! Why not? <laughs> I'm going to put it to good use. I'm not going to let it sit there and go to waste. Let me tell you, Jess McNeil, <laughs> that dick will get you in trouble. <laughs> yeah, that gets everybody else in trouble. It's, so. what, it's what these men, it's what takes these men all these years to work out. And you're going to have it for yep. 24 hours. Although, yep. you're not, although, although you've got the female brain, so you might be a bit smarter about oh, it. Oh, pull oh, me. Oh. Oh, did you, you, got your, you, got your, you got your boots on? I hope so. 
Yes, I do. <laughs> Getting pretty deep in there now. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, cool. Thank you very much for your time, too. That's awesome. we got one more of your songs to play, too. Very cool. Hey, this uh, this tune we're going to do, let's ask you this. It's Sober. What's that all about? Uh, it's one of my favorite songs, um, besides Leaving Home. Leaving Home is my number one choice. But uh, Sober is a song about a woman who um, is with someone that is an alcoholic, and um, she didn't realize this until later on in her relationship, and um, he always is telling her, you know, I love you, this, that, and the other thing, but she wants, he's always telling her this stuff when he's drunk, and so she wants to know that it's for real, and she wants to hear it sober. And you say you wrote a lot of your songs from experience? Yeah, um, this actually was not my experience personally, it was uh, through another songwriter um, in a publishing company, and uh they had a part of it written, and um, they kind of gave me the background of, of the story, and uh, me and my producer finished it. And um, they had already had the chorus, and then we kind of threw in the verses, and um, it turned out really great. So Cool. Can't wait to hear it. That's next on the list. Are we okay to uh, go on your music page and steal some other music if we feel so? Yeah, that's fine. That's totally fine. Awesome, because there's some good stuff there. I want to add a few more to the list if we can, or you can send us some more. Yeah, I can do that too. Yeah, Either great way, stuff. Fine. Awesome music. Your voice is fantastic. You're a good looking gal. Mm-hmm. I think you got it all going on for you over there. Congratulations. Good luck and uh, keep at it, will you? Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys. All right. And if you go back to Pennsylvania, just tell the snow I said hi and I'm thinking about it. <laughs> uh, I won't be back there until it's over with. <laughs> I don't blame you. Take care of yourself. Good night. You too. Thank you. Yep. Have a good night. Bye bye. It's the Yankee and the Bread, the RTM Radio Network.